Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Eric's Adventures. On today's video, we will be replacing the rear bumper on my GX470. So, I have the Ascend Fabrication rear bumper with swing out. It has a tire carrier and an accessory panel. So, this is kind of a hybrid bumper, high clearance, and I think this is one of the best looking rear bumpers on the market now. That's why I bought it. Kind of minimalistic, still keeps the top half of the bumper cover, but still gives you a lot of clearance in the rear. So what we're gonna do is start by removing the bumper cover, this metal tech hitch, and then uh, we'll go from there. First step to removing the rear bumper cover is to take this off. So I've done the strut mod and I basically have this metal clip that's just gonna push off like this. If you have the normal OE strut, it's gonna be a uh, nut or bolt. I can't remember exactly what size, but once this is off, this just comes off like this. Move the strut out of the way. And then I can use this and pop off this plastic piece. And there we go. This is off. And now you're going to have one, two, three, four, five of these 10 millimeter bolts to remove. That is it, and I think this one I ended up stripping. So I'll go from underneath and get it off. Now that you've got these five removed, put them in a safe place because we will be reinstalling this upper section. And then there's gonna be one of these plastic clips. Oh, this one actually came out pretty easily. So yeah, this comes out. And now this bumper should be loose on the top. We'll get underneath and there's a couple bolts underneath. Now remove. that we're not underneath, there's a couple bolts you're gonna have to remove. Mine are just missing. So there's one here uh, right by the mud flap. There's one here that's missing. Another one, this tab is bent in this way. And then another one there, which maybe is on here. And then this one's missing. And then each mud flap will have two bolts so right here and then on the outside after removing all the bolts underneath you're gonna have this plastic clip and then up here there is a uh, 10 millimeter nut it looks like and after that I think we'll just be able to slide the rear bumper out now that everything's removed we can start by grabbing here slide it off is off so be careful not to damage this too much we're gonna end up reusing it and you'll see that here and so yeah here it is because i want to keep my uh plug-in for the trailer or uh, wiring there's this bracket that i have to remove so these are going to be 12 millimeter bolts so there's one and the second one is up in here so this one's a little crustier hopefully it comes out uh, this will not come out as easy
So I'll have that come off. Don't lay underneath. You're going to have a bunch of stuff fall on your face, especially rust. And now you have these two 12 millimeter bolts. So I'm going to socket on it. Uh, yeah, these are two 12 millimeter bolts and this bracket will be reused on the new bumper. I've got the bracket here taken off. I've got it sitting up here just on the cross member out of the way. And now um, this is a metal tech hitch. So these are gonna be 17 millimeter bolts. There's four here, two underneath. I'm gonna take those off. And then we're gonna get to cutting off this rear cross member. Got that trusty Milwaukee half inch. This should just come off, I think. I might have to try more. Here is the fun part where we get to cut off the rear cross member. So, uh, put some tape and make a line kind of where the frame rail is this way. Go all the way around and cut there. And then if you don't cut enough, just grind it down as you need to. But first, what I'm gonna do is uh, cut off my exhaust tip. So you can see where the hanger is. I will cut it off in uh, behind the hanger. So the rest of the exhaust can still be supported, but this tip is not gonna be in the way. I've got it taped up and marked off. I've got the exhaust cut, as you can see. And now I'm gonna start cutting this upper section. Now that this cross member is out, some of these edges are a little bit ugly. So what I'm gonna do is I got a flap disc, I'm gonna clean it up, up here too. And then we will test fit the new bumper, mark out the holes needed, drill those. And after I've got all the new holes drilled and it's all cleaned up, I will paint it. I'm going to cut the bumper. So this bumper is currently upside down. So you can kind of see that. And the mark you want to make is at nine and seven eighths inches. So I've got the bumper marked out. Like I said before, lay the bumper flat upside down and mark it nine and seven eighths inches up. So the way I did that was I used a piece of two by four, I cut it down to size and taped a Sharpie on top. So I measured where the tip of the Sharpie is, nine and seven eighths inches, basically marked it all the way around. And then I put a, uh, the two by four kind of like this and a flat spot and measured to the line in a bunch of different places, at least on the outsides and it all lines up and then here basically uh there's a little there's a black uh tread piece and then i basically made sure that it was correct all along so kind of messed it up at first but redid it take your time with this because 
like the saying goes, measure twice, cut once. So here we go. The next thing we're gonna do is drill out the holes for where the bumper mounts. So you've got two holes here, same on the other side, and then two on the bottom. What I did, I didn't get this on video, is I installed the bumper cover on to check the fitment and then slid the bumper on and I marked out the two holes where it goes on the top side and on the bottom side. I needed to grind down uh, here where I cut to make it fit, but yeah, marked it up. And now time to drill the holes. These are gonna be a half inch diameter hole. So start with a pilot and then work your way up to a bigger drill bit size. So underneath, you're gonna have two threaded holes and that is where your tow hook is. So these are two 17 millimeter bolts. You're gonna take this out and then these will get reused for the bumper. Use an M12 by 1.25 tap to clean out the holes. Put a little bit of cutting oil on your tap just so you don't ruin it and clean up the two holes. Started out by drilling a small pilot hole. Then I went to a quarter inch drill bit and now I'm going up to a half inch. And the important thing is use a lot of cutting oil when you make these because uh, yeah, keep your drill bits nice and sharp. The other thing is the tops is way easier to drill through. The bottom frame rail is a lot thicker. So definitely keep putting uh, cutting oil and yeah, got the two top holes drilled out. I used a half inch bit and then I went to a step bit to open it up a little more than a half inch just to make it easier for me. And now I'm gonna do the bottoms. And after that, I will test fit the bumper and check how it works and then bolt it in. You can see I've got the holes drilled through. Same thing on this side. And now there's some high spots right here and same on the bottom, like right here. I'm gonna grind those down with the flat wheel and that'll just help me put it on, slide the bumper on a little bit easier. And then I will paint this and then install the bumper. Now the holes are drilled, we've got this painted. I've got the first coat on, it's drying. And now while that's drying, what we're gonna do is these brackets right here uh, are gonna get cut off over here. And then this plastic mud flap sticks down too low. So we're gonna trim it like right this way. I have the plastic bumper cover mounted up. Here's it on both sides. The inner fender liner is trimmed up. And now I'm gonna reinstall the five uh, bolts that held it on to here. And first though, I'm gonna reinstall this piece which holds the strut and this is the last step. The bumper has been slid on to the frame rails. Lines up pretty well. And now here is the hardware kit. So you've got four long bolts. These are 19 millimeter. And then you've got these shorter ones, which are gonna be a 17 millimeter, I believe. And these go into where the tow hook or tow hooks got taken out. And then these go in from the bottom side into those threaded nuts on the top. So the shorter ones all get the larger washer. These washers are on top if you need it to kind of shim it up and level it out. And then you've got these plates that go underneath like this. So you'll slide these in. Uh, there's two that go on each side and then uh, bolt it up. So yeah. That's kind of how it all goes together. So now I'm underneath. You could see the aluminum plate is in here. It goes in here. These are the two bolts with the larger washer, the shorter bolts. And then these are the bolts that go all the way through the frame and thread into the two nuts that are on the top side of the bumper. So this is what it looks like installed on both sides. The next thing we're gonna do is install the swing out. So on the driver side, you've got this rubber piece that goes on the vertical. You're gonna have to cut this to size. And this has got some uh, sticker on the back and then you've got the strike pad which goes on the bottom with these two bolts so they sit perfectly flush in here like this with these two nylock nuts and then on the passenger side you've got this little thing uh, with 
uh, these button head bolts and again these two Nidoc nuts. So I'll get this installed and show you how it looks. So on the driver's side, you've got the rubber pad here and the white like plastic strike pad here. These are gonna be a four millimeter hex and then a 10 millimeter nylon nut on the bottom side. And then moving over to the passenger side, this metal plate goes here. Again, four millimeter hex, 10 millimeter nylon nut on the bottom. We'll install the bearings on the swing out. I've got this up on some uh, saw horses. So we've got a roller bearing. The uh, smaller diameter side is gonna go in from the bottom. And then you have a seal that is gonna go like this. So this is the bottom. This is the side that goes towards the bearing. So do the bottom side first. Then you've got a top bearing, a cap, and a uh, uh, crown nut with a uh, cotter pin. So we're gonna do the bottom one first, then we're gonna do the top, slide it in, and then we're gonna put the nut on, put the cotter pin, and then the dust. Putting the bearings in though, we will grease them. I've got some molly grease. Gonna put it all on this one and then install it. Now that the bottom bearing and dust seal is installed, I will take this swing out and install it on the spindle, and then I will put the top bearing in. I've got the uh, top bearing in, the castle nut on, and now here's the plunger that screws into here that holds it in a locked position and then two open positions. So grease this section with the same molly grease, thread it in, and then tighten down this Castle. So here's the swing out installed. You just gotta pull this and the swing's closed. The latch locks in. Now it's locked. Uh, top castle nut, basically I tightened it to the point where it was tight, but the swing out can also work. Got the cotter pin and now the dust cap. Use a soft hammer, tap it in and then we're gonna go do the latch and then the tire carrier and we are done. This is what the latch looks like. So you got this piece with the two flat sides and make sure the nylock nuts are on the flat sides. These two nuts, uh, the U-bolt, the latch itself, and then these four button heads. So these four go in these holes and this is what goes on the actual tire carrier. And then these, these two thread into here this slides in, then you use these, and then uh, this goes in here, and then you can use these to adjust uh, the tension. And the swing out bumper is officially done. So I bolted up the tire carrier to the lowest position possible. Basically this puts the least amount of strain on this. I'm gonna test fit the spare wheel, see how it goes. I'm gonna put some Mack tracks up here. I uh, adjusted the latch so all you do is push and open this up and it's kind of hard to do one-handed and now this is open you pull this and let's see if i can do it you pull up and now this swings out when it gets to a certain point it clicks in and it catches and yeah there we go. Here is the bumper with swing out and tire mounted up onto it. I've had this on here for a little bit now. I've driven a couple thousand miles at a road trip out to Colorado and it's honestly held up super great. Here's the latch um, in some daylight. Basically adjusted it uh, to fit. Opens up like this, super easy. And then now, because this is kind of at an angle, uh, I just kind of pull this up and the swing out opens and so it locks in uh, the first position and this allows the door to open but it does rest on the spare tire the second locked position the door can fully swing open with no issues here's the uh tire carrier mount so uh you got some nylock nuts and washers here it's been bolted up held up great this is what the bumper looks like, fully installed. I've got a shackle here in the back for recoveries. Haven't had to use that yet, but uh, it's there. And yeah, honestly, I'm super, super happy with this bumper setup.
I'm a huge fan of the kind of OEM plus type look where you still got the upper half, but it's high clearance and gives you enough protection. So yeah, if you like this, check out Ascend Fabrication. They're out of Stillwater, Minnesota. And if you like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel and see you next time.